Hi, I'm Mike Munoz, and I'm a rod builder. I'm going to show you how to do inscriptions on rods. It's nice to have your name put on a rod. It's also important to have the specifications, such as line and lure weight. There's lots of different ways to do it. I'm going to show you how I do it. The pens I prefer to use are originally designed for writing on paper. But I've got to treat the sharp edges of every new tip by rotating this on a mildly abrasive surface, sort of polishing it. The point I want to get this to is where it doesn't scratch my thumbnail, because if it scratches my thumbnail, I know it's going to scratch my rod blank. I don't recommend sandpaper. This may take a few minutes also. Let's see if this one's ready. I think we're good. What helps me is using a computer to print out the alphabet and maybe even the words I'm going to write on a blank in several fonts. A lot of us rod builders have scraps laying around. I always tell my friends, keep your scraps. They're great for practicing inscriptions. Where you don't have that opportunity, you can practice your inscriptions in this whole area where your handle is going to go later. It'll be covered up. What I have found helpful is using a Flexco rod support. The track on the underside conveniently puts the surface of my rod on the same plane as my hand, just as if I'm writing on a piece of paper. For bait cast rods with a trigger, I either hang the trigger off the side of the table, or like I'm doing here, use the extra flex coat rod support to elevate the planar surface. The idea is to be comfortable. Now that I'm comfortable, I just need some paint. Here I use a testers enamel paint in silver. I prefer it over other colors. It seems to flow a little better. You can get this at any craft store. Dip your pen in the paint, remove any of the excess on the side, and just get into writing. You want this to go smoothly, and you don't have to write as if you're writing on paper. You can connect the letters at any point that you're writing. Just be comfortable and go smoothly. If we make a mistake, we can always take the paint off with a little denatured alcohol. Now I'm going to put the specifications on an actual rod. This is a six foot six rod, so I'm going to put that on here. I'm also going to put the lure and line weight. Other things you could write on the rod or maybe the person's nickname you're building it for. If you're worried about losing your rod, you can always put your phone number and address if you like as well. I like to put the date because, you know, time slips away. I've gone as far as drawing little fish on rods. Okay, at some point we may run out of paint here, so we may have to revisit our paint well. Just be sure you don't bring a big glob of paint back with you. There we go. And we want to leave uh, plenty of time for this paint to dry before we epoxy this. Great. Here's a few examples of some inscriptions that I've done. They're already epoxied. Here's a nickname, a dentist's title and his name, a date. They don't have to be perfect as long as you're happy with them. I love this stuff.